Welcome back into Night Moods HDQ. It's Michael here, back in the lab on the other side, side of the secret place. I knew that was going to happen. And we are live on the show. I want to welcome, as I'm sitting here at the bridge, welcome in all our podcast channels who are listening to the program on iHeart and Spotify. I want to say welcome to you. And our YouTube channel as well. You're getting a mix of what it looks like to be in the lab while I do the live show. And so we just come on the other side of the secret place. And I'm over here at the bridge. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the bridge and the importance of the bridge. And for those of you on the other side of the secret place, you're more than welcome to stay over there. And as you get uncomfortable or comfortable, however you want to put it, you can come on over here to the secret place and join us Join over here at the, the bridge and join the rest of the night owls because here is where it really goes down. So we, we came through the secret place, tackling stress, tackling your burdens. On the relaxation side. And so now we cross back into life, back into reality. Remember, we entered in the secret place by faith and we do this Monday through Friday nights. Founded upon Matthew 6 and 6, just so that there's clarity. So we come out of the fortress, and it is my hope that when we were in the secret place that you received something tangible, spiritually, that is going to help you manage and deal through the stress in your life. And all the stress in our lives are connected to situations, circumstances, and for those of you who are dealing with stress inside of a crisis, it is my hope that on the other side of, inspir of relaxation on Friday night, when we stepped in the secret place, it's my hope that you receive the revelation. You receive something greater for those of you who participated with trading with Jesus in the apex breathing exercise. That's Matthew 11, 28 and verse 29. Not only did you receive a revelation, maybe an instruction, Maybe you receive something tangible that you can use to help you, whatever that is to you, that you can utilize that helps you manage and deal through. See, we go in there to receive something greater to deal through, not deal with, deal through. Now with through are the, all the spiritual and natural intangibles of with and the how to's. And, and not only the how-to's, because now we're at the bridge, and the how-to is the Holy Spirit. And the bridge always is designed to gather us to cross to the next destination, to the other side. And notice, like I spoke last night, what the bridge represents in the Holy Spirit it crosses over ravines, tributaries, uh, rushing rapids, um, water currents, um, rocky, um, you know, rocky substances, and traffic. And instead of playing frog or, or coming down the side and challenging yourself through the underpass and whatever's under the underpass, that is the stress there. Can you navigate through vehicles traveling at 55 plus miles an hour at a constant pace? Because life is always constant. And sometimes life slows down and sometimes life comes to a crawl and sometimes life is at rapid fire. But it's hard to navigate when you don't go across bridges. And so I liken the Holy Spirit to the bridge because he has the functionality, the purposes, and responsibilities to all of the children of God. And he is the how-to. So the surrender and submission, so that you can learn better how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And this is why we're here at the bridge. So that now you can cross over the bridge. And by crossing over the bridge, you now can not only address the stress but you can utilize the tools, the resources that you received in the secret place that will help you manage and deal through. Now, the key word is through. 
And the Holy Spirit is the how-to. And he's awesome. He's, he comes equipped to help each and every last one of us because all of us are going to deal with a level of stress. And if you have been in the kingdom of heaven long enough, you realize that you don't get born again and stress leaves you. Persecution comes to the followers of Jesus, right? And even though there's persecution, there are things in life that cause the stress, family, family stress, the family dynamics, your working relationships, money causes stress, finances causes stress. If you are living paycheck to paycheck, that causes stress. And so when we learn better how to tap into the Holy Spirit, and I, that word I use loosely is tap in because it's so, uh, and I don't, plug in, because he comes wired up. The essence of our Heavenly Father in Christ Jesus, the essence of Father's glory is the Holy Spirit. And he comes 100% wired up. He is the amplifier from earth to heaven and the amplification from heaven to earth when you understand who he is. And I'm going to do an in-depth teaching on our podcast. If you want to check that out, go, um, we might do that next week. Any of the podcast platforms or po podcast channels, type in Night Moves HTQ, like iHeart, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. I said it right this time. But we're gonna, I'm going to do an in-depth teaching on the functionality and responsibility and purposes of the Holy Spirit in such a way that when you receive the teaching, you're going to be equipped to go through. So we're at the bridge, cross on over, and you're noticing something different tonight. There's no music on this side of inspiration for the first time since the show, inception of the show. And this purpose, we're going to actually go into a break in about 90 seconds, but I'm going to bring us through on an extended show tonight on how to live free after the pain part two i did part one last night part two i'm going to add to it going to help you understand how to deal with emotional pain spiritually so if you want to call in the number is 563-999-3685 once again the number is 563-999-3685 Eight, five. You can also email me during the show. I'll get back to that probably after the show. Nightmoodshdq at gmail.com if you have a question or thought surrounding how to live free after emotional pain. Part two, we'll be back after 60 seconds. In a short break here, going to come back on the radio show, and you're going to be joining me live here. I shouldn't say live, but you're getting this live. Actually, Spotify is getting this on rebroadcast, but we're going to be breaking down part two of how to live free after the pain. You check out part one. Hope it makes sense. If you have a question or, or a thought or God says something to you that you can add to the conversation, love to hear from you as well. Um, down here with me on the podcast, I want to welcome you guys listening to the podcast as well. And Jill is down here for the first time. I want to have her say hello to everyone. You can kind of lean and say hello. Those of you on YouTube won't hello. be seeing her, but there's Jill right there. She's saying hello. Um, she may ch she may chime in. She may add something to tonight. Um, that's the whole purpose. But we're going to help you deal through how to live after emotional pain. Stay with me. We're going to come back live, finish up the show, and I'm going to be here with you for the remainder of Night Moods, the podcast. Welcome to the podcast channel. Welcome back into Night Moods HDQ. It's Michael here in the lab, in my captain's chair. And I love the lab. It's where it all goes down. All the planning, all the prep, even in ministry, uh, life coaching, when I prepare I come in here, or the, we have a war room down here. So my wife and I, we, we spend time in one of those two places. I'm more so she'll find me here more than any other place when I'm not uh, in service or serving. But um, she's here live with me. You want to say hello to everyone? Hello. <laughs> that is Miss Jill. Hope you heard her. Um, we'll hopefully have her talking on a future show. But we're going to continue onward 
with how to live free after the pain on an extended show tonight tonight is a weekly series friday night series of inspiration and relaxation and there I go i said it backwards we do re relaxation and inspiration the first half normally on a 60 minute show but we are here for a 90 minute show if you want to call in or if you want to send an email or you can go to our social media platforms if you want to let us know privately send an email but you can comment on social media as well or on our podcast channels listening to how to live free after the pain part two and so we're going to take the journey from last night on how to live free after emotional pain during emotional pain as i talked about last night it has to do with choices submission surrender and that is spiritual obedience but you're surrendering and submitting to the power of the holy spirit and you'll never find religious teaching here by the way on night moves hdq and it takes a level of trust and also relearning how to love yourself after immediately coming out of the emotional pain. The emotional pain attacks the mind and when the mind is really at the lowest levels of depletion, then it likes to attack the heart because when we're dealing with emotional pain, what I found out is many of us deal through our heart. And when the mind is all topsy-turvy, schizophrenic, and dealing with loved ones who are mistreating us and misruling us and just being just downright wrong towards us, dishonoring us, then we kind of lose control of the mind. And then we're struggling with the heart issue. And you know what I'm talking about because how many relationships have you said my heart is broken you have broken my heart that is telling me that the mind has already been defeated and now the heart is now the most important matter that you are dealing with because once the heart is crushed then life is futile for many of us yeah but jesus says something very interesting in john 14 1 let your heart not be troubled let your heart not be troubled. Let your heart not be distressed. See, I don't believe the heart was ever intended to take on what the mind is supposed to fight off. But again, when we are in vulnerable places in life, then the mind can't be shored up, so to speak. The mind can't be strengthened because it's being attacked by mental anguish, by mental abuse, words, and the actions, because our, our eye gates are in the brain. So you're seeing something like trauma or physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse. And if it's inside of the church, it takes on a whole nother meaning. Talking tonight about emotional pain and how to live free. So we have to then, then be retaught how to love ourselves again. And this is why we, we have implemented the secret place. It's in the scriptures. And so we apply ourselves logically and practically with how to step in by faith into the secret place and do exactly what Jesus says and get exactly the rewards that Jesus says we are to get. So retooling spiritual maintenance now because you need spiritual maintenance to handle physical maintenance, mental maintenance, emotional maintenance. And it doesn't matter how many how-to books, self-help books you can read, but when your spirituality is not being accessed, it's like all these diet programs. When you're trying for those who want to lose weight and they try to lose weight when they jump on all these diets, they don't work. But if you address the spiritual side of life, connecting to the Holy Spirit, who's connected to the Father, and the Holy Spirit searches the depths of 
the glory of Father. And, and when you understand, I talked about this last night, when you understand the power in the Holy Spirit and then his the Holy Spirit's functionalities, his purposes, his responsibilities to each and every last one of us, then you'll understand how big our Heavenly Father is. So now the retraining of how to love each other, how to love ourselves. Firstly, when you've come through emotional pain, and I want to share some things with you, and I want to kind of go here out of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 34. Let me back up here. Check this out. We're talking about how to live free after pain. So there's some realizations that you have to replug in. Instead of plugging into the plane, the pain and playing around in the arena of emotional pain and how they treated you and how this was done to you and how you have, feel unworthy and your self-worth is, is down because honor wasn't given to you and respect wasn't given to you. It was misused, misappropriated, and it was abused. We're dealing with any type of emotional pain, honor and respect is misused, misappropriated, and abused. And so it draws down how we feel about ourselves internally. And how we feel about ourselves internally, we project out into the atmosphere, into our fellowships, into our family settings, into, into life. But notice what is written here in Psalms 34, verse 16. The face of Yahweh is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Catch that. They cry out and Yahweh hears. They are the children of God. They cry out and Yahweh hears and delivers them from all of their troubles. Yahweh is near to those who are heartbroken and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Do you see what I was talking about here? Do you see the significance of addressing the spiritual maintenance any time and every time you come through emotional pain? You have to plug back in to the Holy Spirit. There is no other way around it. There is no 30-second diet program, 12-step process in the Christian church that's going to address you spiritually greater than the Holy Spirit. Again, he comes powered up. 100% of Abba Father. And so when you reconnect, it's like, look at the plug in your walls, the outlets. And then when you plug a light or a plug, you know, your phone charger into the outlet, the phone gets powered up, the lights get powered up, electricity runs through and hits its destination. Wattages and ohms go at full capacity. And sometimes you can turn the dim down on the bulb, but you see the electricity charging, illuminating the object. And so when we replug in to the Holy Spirit, what we're doing is we are plugging into the essence of Abba Father, his glory, his, his, his characteristics, his integrity, his excellence, and his power. And sometimes when we detach and attach for the sake of love and relationships, then we're forsaken one for the other. And when we detach from the Holy Spirit and attach ourselves to our boyfriend or attach ourselves to our girlfriend, then you are instantly becoming depleted. The focus turns more so to your soul and your body. And so you put walls up, so to speak, that were never supposed to be put up to keep you connected to the Holy Spirit. I hope you're following me with this. Emotional pain, how to live free after emotional pain. Pay attention to the words of Peter in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 here. Be sober, be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, walks around roaring 
like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Now, what does he want to devour? The mind. If he gets the heart, then it's game over. The mind is for possession. And the heart, the Holy Spirit possesses. See the importance of the heart? Jesus says in John 14, 1, and do not let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be distressed. So coming through any type of emotional pain, you have to trust in Father. He's in the situation. He's in the circumstance. And yes, he's in the crisis that you may be dealing with. But you have to reconnect. You have to divest yourself out of that situation and invest yourself into the Holy Spirit, into a relationship that you have to work at with Jesus. Because he says, I am the door. No one comes to the Father unless they come through me. In so many words, right? So Father is the end game in all of this. And Jesus is the doorway. He's the truth. He's the life. And sometimes we forsake Jesus for the sake of love. For the sake of relationship. To fill a void. To fill empty promises. Broken commitments. Loneliness. But how many times when you look back at your life and all of us have dealt on a level of emotional pain. I've dealt on a level of emotional pain. Extreme emotional pain. When you look back at that, were you connected to God going through it? Were you involved in, in developing your relationship with Heavenly Father? Were you walking and cooperating and listening to the urges and the unctions of the Holy Spirit? When you look back on those drastic times of emotional pain. And I would venture the guess that 99% of us, when we look back at any of the emotional pain, if you're listening tonight and you're going through some emotional pain, maybe take some notes down. This will all make sense as it settles. You know, think of like running through a, a, a dirt field and you have everyone running and the dirt's building up and you can't see and you, you can't hardly breathe and you, you can you can barely feel around and get a sense of where you're at. But once the dust settles, you, you begin to see clear with your eye gates and your ear gates. You know what I'm saying? So this may not make sense right now, but as you write down some notes and you maybe jump into some scripture and allow the scripture to speak to you and envelop what has been hidden because we want to replace one for the other. Maybe you felt like God has not given you what you need immediately and you can get that tangible experience physically. And then that blows up in our faces. But when has God ever blown up in your face? When you've been spiritual obedient and, and, and right standing. And even when you've not been in spiritual obedience and right standing, when have you understood in your relationship with God that he's blown up in your face? And yet he's still there, unconditional love, waiting for you to come back into him through his son. And then Jesus said this really cool statement in John chapter 16. I want to say verse 8. That I must go to the Father, and it's to your advantage that I go to the Father. Because if I don't go to my Heavenly Father, then you can't have the paraclete, the Spirit of Truth. So because he's sitting at the right hand of Abba Father, every last one of us who are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, you have an advantage. But yet, you leave the spiritual relationship and gravitate and get blown out of the water through a natural relationship and that's a broad brush that I'm painting I understand that 
But how to live free? Well, Michael, you're not really telling me how to live free. You're speaking around. No, I'm telling you to plug back into the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you to recognize who you've been trusting and how that has been working for you. Not your abuser, not your ex-boyfriend, or not your current lover you live in. You've been trusting yourself. And then in that trust of yourself, some of you have been giving your power away. But nowhere will you find that in the Bible, the scriptures, the recorded records in Jesus' walk that he says to give your power away to another individual. In fact, he says in John 5, 14, he talks about relationship and he talks about plugging in with him and, and being in him and he is in us and he is in the Father and the Father's in him and they are in us and they leave themselves in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father's essence. Step one, trusting the Holy Spirit when you're coming out and wanting to live free from pain. Surrender and submitting the mind control of you wanting to do everything or it has to be this way because that's what you're used to maybe you have to surrender and submit that as well learning how to cooperate in the realm of the spirit that your mind can't see and can't digest but when you just break down what jesus has to say about the holy spirit and the purposes and the functions let me go here let me let me bring this up because this is kind of amazing and this is going to help you. This is going to help you. So let me bring this in. <clears throat> and maybe you might get a bigger picture. See, the Holy Spirit comes with functionality, comes with purposes, and comes with responsibilities to the children of God and also the world. But I want to focus on you, the children of God. How to live free after the pain. Unplug from a dead outlet, from dead power, with in and out surge, in frequency, and plug in to the Holy Spirit, who's 100% filled, completed with the essence of Abba Father, Christ Jesus, and the power and the authority, and he has functionality and responsibility and purposes to every one of you. These are Jesus' words in John chapter 16, verse 7. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate, the paraclete, the spirit of truth, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So now we know that he went to the right hand of the Father and sent his spirit. And you are born again, so you are possessed by the Holy Spirit but some of you are possessed by your mind and some of you rather play with your mind and entertain the mind versus entertaining yourself with the Holy Spirit some of you spend more time cooperating with the mind versus cooperating with the Holy Spirit but I want you to pay attention to the functionality and purposes and responsibilities of the Holy Spirit and then compare the function, purposes, responsibilities to your mind, function, your mind, responsibility. Because what is your mind responsible of? It's a good question. Maybe you want to find the answer. Verse 8, John 16, And when he comes, the paraclete, he will convict the world of concerning sin and concerning righteousness and concerning judgment. He gives you three responsibilities in the world that... that Holy Spirit has purpose and function too. Duality. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning right standing with the governing authority of the kingdom of heaven because I go away to the Father and you will see me no more. And concerning judgment. See, the Holy Spirit is here to persuade and convict the world that's his responsibilities and duality because he's here for us as an advantage and to the world as a spirit of conviction and a spirit of 
persuasion to persuade them into the kingdom by becoming born again. But pay attention in verse 13. But when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth comes, excuse me, write this down. He will guide you into all truth. Now compare this with your mind. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears from heaven, he will speak, and he will proclaim to you the things to come. So he transferred what he hears from heaven regarding you, and he prophesies to your future. Compare this to your mind. How to live free after the pain. I suggest to you to plug into the Holy Spirit. Unplug from the pain for enough time to plug in and get full surge of the Holy Spirit spiritually. He will proclaim to you the things to come. Then he will glorify me, Jesus is saying this, because he will take from what is mine and will proclaim it to you. So he transfers kingdom in intelligence, kingdom information, kingdom re revelation, revelation, and impartation from Jesus to you. Jesus goes on and says, everything that the Father has is mine. Do you believe that? For this reason I said, the Holy Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. How to live free after the pain has everything to do with unplugging from the pain. For a matter of time that you can plug into the Holy Spirit and watch the pain be reduced and possibly be dissipated. See, this whole deal was 17 steps to do this, 13 steps to do this, um, those 17 Hail Marys and this goes away. No, this has everything to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. See, this is practicality living in the kingdom. How to live free after the emotional pain part two. And we don't want to make this hard because now I want to take you into Matthew 7. And I want to share some words to help you so that you understand what Jesus is saying. All clear. Matthew 7, 7. Pay attention here because Jesus is talking. And I, I'm, I want to pull this out for the sake of how to live free after the pain. You plug back into the Holy Spirit. You're plugged back into Jesus Christ, who is the doorway to Heavenly Father, and our access is to the Father, our proximity is to the Father, and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, mediating upon his children, and his, our, we are his friends, he is our brother, and he's our Messiah, he's our Savior, he's our Redeemer, and they're having this conversation in heaven. And then he says this in Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. Beloved, don't just continue to play around in the, in the entertainment world of, of your mind. Your mind wants to benefit what the mind wants to benefit, and the soul is connected to it. But this deal with how to live free after pain has everything to do with you plugging in and abiding in the Holy Spirit. This makes sense to you tonight. Now I was going somewhere and I lost my train of thought, but the whole point of how to deal, how to manage, how to take the first initial steps to live free after emotional pain is no longer trusting in the mind, but trusting in the power, the functionality, the purposes, and the responsibilities of the Holy Spirit. When you understand who the Holy Spirit is for you, and I just gave you a little bit of John chapter 16, verse 6 through 13, 6 through 13, 7 through 13, excuse me. And then you, you learn to trust, and then you learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And yes, Abuse sucks. Yes, pain hurts, but you have to allow pain to be healed. And Father knows how to heal you, your pain. He knows how to heal your emotional pain effectively 
without any assistance, and he knows definitely how to heal your physical pain. Enough emotional pain can cause physical pain. Enough emotional pain can cause physical pain. Health issues can consume you because of a, men a mental uh, weakened an immune system. Jill just said immune system. Mm -hmm. So tonight, there is no six steps to do this. Twelve steps. Fast and pray. We're using logic and the practical, the practicality of the word of God. And you have been possessed by the Holy Spirit. In your heart is the power of God and is the Holy Spirit that searches the depths of Father's glory. Did you know that? So, beloved, as I'm share, sitting here in the, the lab on a special night of inspiration and relaxation, relaxation and inspiration, on, on an elongated show tonight, we're going a little bit long. You can still call in at 563-999-3685. You can even email at nightmoodshdq at gmail.com if you have a question of how to take the initial steps. What if you are under a landlord of a spouse, of a boyfriend? Physical, mental, sexual, verbal abuse. How do you live free in that? See, there are questions that we have to answer. How do you live free when you're under the rule of another? Now, I'm not here to justify abuse. I'm here to liberate you. Night owls all over the world on this young program, perched, taking notes. It's time for you to fly, but some of your wings have been clipped. That means Father has to restore the ligaments and the tendons, has to reconnect what's been disconnected because it's been stamped out. And maybe the door has been open over and over, but you've been under a systemic lock and key, shackles and bondage, and you still, it's like they've been taken off of you and the door's been open and he sent beloveds to you to say you are free, but yet because you have been so conditioned and so trained emotionally, you don't know how to fly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the first. On Night Moods HDQ, you're going to get in this, a serious inspiration. I want to take you to Galatians 5. I want to help you out here. I was going to read some quotes. Nah, you ain't got time for quotes. Time is life and life is time. What are you doing with the life? And it'll tell you about your time. What are you doing with your time? It'll tell you about your life. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another see you were called to freedom jesus came to set you free now if you confess jesus christ as your lord and savior and you're still in pain emotional pain he came to set you free place you position you into this the station of freedom and then he supplied you with the spirit of freedom and the spirit of freedom is looking at you like the door's open but you won't walk through the door and then he sends you grace. And the spirit of grace says the door is open. But yet you won't walk through the door. And then he sends you the spirit of mercy. And the spirit of mercy says to you, Beloved, the door is open. But you won't walk through the door. See, Father's always been there. He's always been in it. He's in it. He is it. 
and he's made sure that you understood in no uncertainties that the door's been opened to you, but the mind has been hijacked and pain is the Lord. And you feel as if you cannot get up and leave because pain might destroy you. Pain might hurt you even further than you've been hurt. Pain might place you in the prison. But Jesus Christ came to place you into freedom. That's what he died for. So you have to trust in Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. No one comes to the Father except they come through me. How to live free after the emotional pain, part two. The spirit of grace is available to you right now. The spirit of mercy is available to you right now. And Jesus is the doorway. But notice that he doesn't place himself purposely to come pick you up. That's why he sends angels. Are they not ministering spirits sent to render service to the heirs of salvation? See, the door doesn't come to you to open up. The door is there for you to walk through. So you have to trust in the realm of the spirit greater than you trust in yourself. How much hurt has ever come to you from Jesus or the Father or the Holy Spirit or the heavenly messengers who encounter you day in and day out? How much hurt has come from the presence of the kingdom versus how much hurt has come from the natural effects of humanity. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. And then when you begin to trust all the more into the Holy Spirit and you spend time greater with the Holy Spirit than you do with your mind, then you have these light bulb moments and realizations that He's equipping you to stand up, to take a deep breath. And yes, the spirit of fear is taking flight because you stood up. It has no greater grip on you anymore because you stood up and you began to take the steps with the Holy Spirit. And notice what is said about the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ himself. The spirit of truth will lead you into all truth, but the spirit of fear has been your hindrance. Did you get a light bulb moment right there? Some of you have been extolling the spirit of fear and building walls with the spirit of fear. But we come in to knock the walls down tonight so that you can live free after emotional pain, emotional abuse, systematic abuses. Some of you need to stand up and take a deep breath. Hold your hand out into the atmosphere and say, Jesus, take my hand. I will walk with you through this door. I won't look back. We know what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back. But Jesus, I'll walk with you. And I'm trusting you in this very moment that your spirit and the power and the authority that comes with the Holy Spirit has all of and every one of my best interests in his purview. Jill, you can say something. You have to come in. Jill has something to say, so. No, I'm just listening. So I just wanted to say, sometimes when you've been in a lot of pain, and even if it's been a short amount of time or a lot of time, you're going to get tired of being tired. And it's really easy to want to shut yourself off and, and make your world real small because you can control that. But that's not how we were meant to live. 
And you have to realize that, and it sounds so cliche, but you have to realize that there's so much more brighter days on the other side than that. And the only way you're going to know that is by giving it a try. It's the only way. Well said. See, tonight's special. Relaxation, inspiration. I didn't get, sorry about going too deep in the weeds, too deep into the, the garden of life to go and pull you out tonight. But see, that's part of the mission here at Night Moods. This is what you're going to get. And you'll get it also greater on the podcast. How to live free after the pain. And if that's you, we definitely want to hear from you tonight. Over the weekend, you can send an email over to Night Moods HDQ. And we'll help you step into truth. Be empowered. Be encouraged. And to help you get built up. It's hard to breathe when you have the house sitting on top of you. And that's what has happened for many of you, I suppose, that you have built a house and you've been buried underneath the house. The process of living free is simply to choose to live free. That's the process. There is no steps. If there are steps, it's to begin to walk with the Holy Spirit. And you're walking with Jesus. And he's mediating on your behalf. So we haven't even begun to address in the courtroom of how to have Father give you relief from your adversary. But it first has to happen with you stepping up and trusting in the Holy Spirit that he has your best efforts. And it doesn't matter about family tradition or how you were raised. But it has everything to do with your intercessor, your helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. And you can be free. You will be free. Beloved, this is for you. Ask Jesus for help and he will send you help. And now you have to receive the help. Would love to hear from you as we get ready to sign off on the radio show. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. And let us know how tonight's impacting you. If there's been some changes, send us an email over at nightmoodshdq at gmail.com. And I'll see you right back here Monday night in the lab in the captain's chair. Night Moods HDQ is Michael signing off on the radio. Have a good night. So we're closing up the show tonight, and kind of powerful on what the purpose is for how to live free after pain, especially emotional pain. And too many are found themselves in like black sand. And so we're hoping that you'll get something of 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 substance out of tonight, something that is going to prick you to mobilize around someone who is also going through it, who, who can no longer stand to be in, in emotional pain. And tonight, it's how to live free after the pain. And we hope that with anything I've said, with Jill sharing here on the podcast, that it affects you in such a way that if you're going through emotional pain, you don't have to go through the emotional pain. You don't have to do anything that's outside of the purview of our Heavenly Father and His Holy Spirit. And that's the greater thing right now. That is what we come to understand in our walk as brothers and sisters, as husband and wife, and as ministers. You know, and thank you for saying something. Thank you for sharing because it's impactful to hear from others too. Um, 
And before we close off tonight, I want to hear from you. Night Moods at nightmoodshdq at gmail.com. And for those listening on or watching on our, our YouTube Night Moods channel and on, also on my channel, um, send us a comment if this has affected you to, to mobilize and to take the initial steps of learning better and understanding how to trust the Holy Spirit in, in becoming free. Remember, Jesus Christ came to set you free. You have been put in a position of freedom. It's time to come from underneath the house and be free. And then renew your mind. Your mind needs to be renewed. I didn't share that on the radio show, but your mind needs to be renewed. And you need to, to, to put in your support cast of fellowships, those brothers and sisters, family, friends, associates who can empower you, who can encourage you, who can build you up because they have been through emotional pain. They have been sent by God to help you reestablish you. And do not think that you cannot be reestablished no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. If you say, oh, I don't have any money to go out on my own. I don't, Michael, you don't understand. God understands. He wants you free. Jesus didn't go through what he had to go through for his brothers and sisters that he redeemed to live a life of bondage when he paid the price. To live a life of... In, and having shackles put upon you and looking at those shackles and you couldn't gnaw those shackles off if you wanted to because they seem to be soldered with raw iron but he paid the price for that too how to live free after the pain emotional pain i hope tonight has been of of value to you i hope this moment you have light bulbs going off there has been a revelation um, oozing up out of your belly that a plan of how to engage freedom for yourself and you've been encouraged by anything you've heard you've been equipped tonight by the scriptures by logic and practicality through wisdom um, you know myself and, and Jill has gone through this emotional pain we'll talk about that some more on, on, a, on a different time here on, on uh, the podcast channel but you can, you can navigate through this as long as you learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and understand the Holy Spirit in this, his purposes, functionalities, and responsibilities for you and you. So we're going to sign off for tonight, and we're going to come back into it. Hope you join me on the next podcast, and I hope you've been blessed by tonight's How to Live Free After Emotional Abuse Part 2. And if it's blessed you, remember to subscribe, like, share the program. And if this blessed you, all the more bless someone else with the word. Invite them to come to the, the podcast. This is the in-depth teaching of what we do here on the channel. And you can also learn how you can support the channel too. You can email us. Uh, we can help you with that too as well. Until then, you guys have a wonderful time away and we'll see you next time here on the channel night moods hdq and my personal channel good night